is uh, Deepak Sahu uh, from the University of Sussex. Thank you. Um, so, JOLED, uh, it's a media display and it stands for Janus Object Levitated Electro Rotated uh, Display. It was done in Interact Lab at Sussex. So, what is a Janus Object? So, Janus uh, is a Roman god who could look to the future and the past. So scientists call uh, Janus objects the particles which, have, which can present two or more properties, chemical or physical properties. For example, uh, this one, which have two colors, like white and dark red, and the coated dark red is actually paramagnetic, so two different magnetic properties. What is related to Jolet is the Gyricon display where the black hemisphere is positively charged and the white hemisphere is negatively charged. So that two colors and two charges and it's rotated using an electric field to create a electronic paper display. So it was from there. So the idea was, the motivation behind Jolet was to bring this uh, Janus objects to me there and create a media display of a tabletop or a mobile device and try to improve the user experience in visualizing 3D data or 3D tasks. So the related work is uh, zero n, where magnetic levitation was used to levitate one particle and a projector was used to uh, display information. And then a pixie dust, where a grid of objects were levitated using acoustic levitation, and a projector was used to uh, project information. The another uh, another uh, contribution of pixie dust was the grid of objects could be moved in 3D. And then a levy path, where uh, multiple objects could be manipulated in uh, in 3D, but there's no projection. So the idea behind Jolet was to extend the work of Levy Path and create a, um, a electronic uh, uh, electronic display like uh, of the display to project to uh, present information. So so using acoustic levitation, we create a 2D screen in mid air. And by modulating the phases of the phased array at the top and below, we are able to manipulate the screen in 3D. It's going up and down and back and forth. But what is main uh, critical contribution of Jolet was that we can uh, flip the bits. So we don't have to use any projector to calibrate and project information. It just works like an e ink display in midair. So we are able to flip the bits as in the smiley character winking the left eye. So we can also uh, flip multiple bits in an array. And we can also flip individual bits independently in a, to the array using individual electrodes. So apart from the display application, uh, we, uh, we, uh, which, which used only flipping, we also show that Jolet, using Jolet, we can controllably rotate the uh, Janus object. So, so we create, using these properties, we created some uh, fun applications, like games in 3D space. So we built uh, this prototype where, if you, where we can move the one uh, object in midair, and we and we created this uh, platform jump game. So when the jump is successful, the bit flips, showing a successful uh, jump. So in this game, we moved the bit from left to right, and the user was allowed to move up and down using an array uh, and. Uh, up and down arrow key, and when it was successful, it flipped. To show emotion or a successful jump. 
Another interesting thing in GeoLED is we can incorporate different structures and make interesting uh, make games like this, where we used acoustic transparent fabric to create a 3D race course. And there is a And there is a uh, flying car which goes along the race course. Okay. And in, in, in this game, the user was, uh, so the, the car was moved along the race course, and the user was allowed to uh, show the uh, use up and, arrow, and up and down arrow button, button to show the heading direction. So how does uh, it, uh, Joled work? So the working principle is, so we use uh, acoustic levitation, so use standing waves using two phased ar uh, arrays at the top and bottom to levitate the uh, objects. And then we use transparent electrodes around the levitation volume to manipulate the uh, voxels. So how do we uh, rotate the, the Janus object? So here we put uh, a tiny spot of uh, dielectric powder on the uh, voxel. So it's white in color, titanium uh, dioxide, which is common ingredient in uh, white paint. And it's tiny spot. It doesn't cover the entire hemisphere. and it can be painted over to conceal it. And then when we put this modified uh, object in an electric field, the dielectric powder induces a charge. If the, if the, if the, uh, if the Janus object is not aligned along the electric field, the force applied on the dielectric uh, powder induces a torque and makes the voxel align itself along the electric field. So we can rotate the electric field and rotate the uh, voxel. So how do we move the voxels controllably in 3D space? So we use the an optimizer which gives uh, and specify an anti-node and node pattern and the optimizer gives the phases that is required to give the transducers so that the so so that a an acoustic field is created to trap an object in midair. And note that the transducers can have any random configuration, so it allows the users to specify any uh, any kind of display they want. And what is interesting is that to move the object. We specify a new position, but the algorithm can perform in real time, and it allows to recompute the phases in real time and allows us to move the Joled uh, voxels in real time in 3D. And we extend the algorithm to 2D to make a 2D screen which can move uh, in 3D. So for e evaluation. We used uh, electrodes with different widths, separation, and different voltages, and tried to calculate the minimum torque that is required to uh, rotate individual uh, voxels. The, uh, the acoustic levitation actually doesn't create any torque on the ob object. However, due to the irregularity in the shape of the voxel, Practically, we need a minimum force of torque to rotate the bullet voxel. So in our setup, we found that we need a minimum 400 micronewton force, which corresponds to the parallel plate the capacitor configuration, uh, and, which calls, uh, and for a 3.5 millimeter EPSB, it corresponds to 0.7 micronewton meter torque. So it requires very minimal torque to uh, rotate the uh, rotate the voxels, and more interesting thing was when we measured the flipping speed. 
So by increasing the uh, force in different ways, which is by increasing the width or reducing the separation or increase the voltage, we increase the force applied on the voxels. And we saw that the flipping speed increased linearly with applied force. And we were able to get 26.44 flips per second, which is uh, video rate. So it's possible to create a, a display to, project, to present uh, video information. So <clears throat> power consumption in this setup, uh, so we developed three setups. One was the top left was the display, and the second one was the race, uh, flying car race game, and the bottom one was the platform jump game. And we used different configuration of the acoustic transducers. And the algorithm was able to give us uh, optimal performance in all these cases. So for the power consumption is presented for the platform jump game, which was the largest setup, and the with viewing area of 130 millimeters by 120 millimeters. And we use electrode to 30 to 80 millimeters around the, uh, uh, the uh, game area. And the electric power consumption was 53.3 micro microwatts. So it's minimal electric power consumption in operating the Jole. However, the main power consumption was by the acoustic uh, levitation system, which was 132 milliwatt per transducer. So for scalability, like any display, the Jole display would require active matrix addressing for each uh, pixel. However, it will require high voltage switching, which is a, a limitation. And one could use also passive matrix uh, addressing for each pixel, but because the rows and columns uh, create uh, for each uh, pixel create interference. Uh, so we used uh, seg segment addressing scheme where each electrode is uh, addressed individually. Of course, this will limit uh, uh, corresponding to each application, like how large the electrode we require. So to, to, be, to create big, la, uh, big Jolet displays, uh, these are the constraints. The lateral spacing depends upon the size of the transducers, which is 10 millimeter in our case. And the vertical spacing is 4.3 millimeter, which is half the wavelength of ultrasound in our case. So we can increase the resolution of lateral and vertical resolution by using a different, uh, smaller transducers with higher frequency. And to make a larger, uh, wider Jolet display, we could stack more transducers and make a wider uh, Jolet display, but to have, have a uh, higher display, we need to have more powerful transducers. So in our setup, we use, using the commercial transducers, we levitated 15 bits with 75 millimeter height. And we estimate that if we can use eight times more powerful transducers, we can still be operating within the safety limit of ultrasound and levitate 120 bits, which is 600 millimeters, like more than half a meter height and arbitrary width. So we can have a fully functional, uh, like small TV like display using Jolly. So <clears throat> in the future, we would like to uh, extend the planar display, though, we, though the screen is movable in 3D, it's a planar display, and we want to, ex uh, we are ex uh, extending it to 2.5D screen, and then we are trying to rotate. So we, have, we showed predominant all the applications. We flip the bead mainly in the display. We would like to rotate each, each uh, voxel independently in the screen, and try to, um, try to show high bit depth uh, at display because we can now continuously rotate the uh, screen. So should be able to get high bit depth. And because we can now, using uh, acoustic levitation, we can have different layers of uh, uh, screens to try to extend it as a multi-layer display with, to show multi-chromatic uh, uh, feature. 
to this, I'd like to thank my uh, co-authors. Uh, Takuto and uh, Michiro are from Tokyo. They visited our lab. And Asir and Themis are three students in Bristol. And, and also thank the funding agencies. So our lab is, uh, the tweet is in the uh, lab interact. And I'd like to thank you guys for listening to the talk. Roll Vertigal, Queen's University. Uh, excellent work. Um, uh, one of the reasons we, we started working on drones for this purpose is because um, we want to be able to move um, individual voxels. Do you have any suggestions on how to do that? So drones won't be able to move. Could you please repeat the question? No. Uh, uh, at at Kaidesi, we presented a system called bit drones. And, and, and while drones have their limitations, uh, one of the reasons for, for starting on drones for, for uh, self-levitating objects is because we can control them individually. And one of the fundamental limitations of this technology is that it's very, very difficult, if I'm not mistaken, to, to control individual voxels. Do you have any suggestions on how to overcome that? For drones? With, well, drones is one option, but I mean with this technology. Um, so Rather than moving the entire screen. Yes, so, um, so the charging technique, though we showed it for uh, small bits, it can be applied to any object. So, so you could uh, apply some uh, white paint with a dielectric pow pow uh, powder in it and try to use electric fields to uh, rotate. I mean, that's what falls out from this idea, but I don't know how it will work with, uh, with high electric fields. The electronics may complain. Hello. Um, hi, I'm Long Pan from Hustle Plan and Institute. So, um, did you test how much external disturbance that the system can resist? For example, like wind or like if the hand want to interact with the voxels, like how much external forces that the system still can sustain? Yeah, that's a uh, practical limitation. Um, we didn't look into like how much disturbance it can uh, uh, it can handle. But uh, the acoustic levitation system will, uh, will suffer from uh, external uh, wind or any disturbance. But using powerful transducers, I think you can make powerful, uh, more stronger levitation points and counter that to some extent. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Um, so right now you've shown that you can use electric fields to rotate the objects. Is there an opportunity to use the electric fields to potentially provide translation as well and in conjunction with the, with the ultrasound? Is that, is that possible? Uh, yes, that's a good question because <clears throat> now the electric field actually applies a force to the objects, but the object is held in position by the acoustic uh, trap. So it's not able to translate uh, by that force. So the acoustic trap holds it in position, and if there is misalignment, it just aligns itself along the electric field. But we saw in the experiments that if we use too much electric field, the bead escaped and just stuck to the uh, electrode. So it's possible to translate the uh, beads using electric field as well as rotate it. Uh, so let's thank the speaker once again.